hey everyone, I am so excited to spend this time with you today. So, all month long we're talking about friendship. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. Now a few weeks ago I asked you guys a question, I'm going to ask the same question again. Have you ever had an experience where you were having to do something by yourself and you thought, wow, this sure would be a lot easier with a friend. Maybe you were at home or at school or on the sports team, wherever, but you had that moment where you really wished you had a friend to help you. And maybe in that moment you wondered, does anybody even care what I'm facing right now? Well, I have a feeling that we have all experienced this from time to time. So the question is, what do we do in that moment? It's a really good question and it deserves a really good answer. And for a really good answer, we need to go to the Bible. You see, the Bible is full of examples where people experienced God and then God inspired them to write it down so that people like us could get to know God better. So today we're going to check out one of those experiences and then we're going to talk about how it relates to this question about friendship.
buddies, ch, arms, chums, ami, goes, amigos, p, owls, pals, fr, frothy, frothy. No, no, listen. Fr, fructose, fructose. fructose. Mm -mm. Fr. Ontogenesis. Frontogenesis. Why aren't you saying that? Sorry. Sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm with you this time. Okay. Okay, all right. Mashed pate. Toes. Thanks for that. John, he's Brandon, and we're friends. That's correct. We know each other so well, we can finish each other's soup. Taco soup. That is true. We both do like taco soup. You know what they say, friends are friends for, for as long as the money's rolling in. Some people do say that, but not us. Never. No, no. We are as close as two peas in a pod. Poncherello. Broncherello, that's 1970s motorcycle cop show of chips. Yeah, we know each other so well. Hey, can you guess what I'm gonna say next? Of course! Please, Please welcome, welcome someone, someone who knows stuff! All right! Woo! <laughs> All right. Welcome, welcome! Yeah, please, sit down. I'm actually used to standing, if you don't mind. Oh, no, sure, we'll stand up too. Oh, uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, tell us who you are and what you know. Mm. I'm Sally Joggins, and I'm a water volunteer for Marathon Runners. A water volunteer? That's right. When Marathon Runners are in the middle of the race, they can't just stop off at any watering fountain. That's where I come in. So, so you give water to runners as they run by? I don't just give out water. Anybody could do that. I assess the runner's approximate fatigue and dehydration levels, and then I quickly provide them with the amount of fluids they require to keep them in the race. Heads up, let's go, you're at the 16th mile mark, you're killing it. Are you at a, 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 are you at a marathon right now? I sure am. Oh cool, how many, how many races have you volunteered for? I volunteered for 278 marathons, half marathons, triathlons, and fun runs all over the US, the UK, and twice in Canada. Wow, that sounds like... You've got this. You're making great time. Let's go. Go, go, go. I love how you're trying to motivate the runners as they go by. Is that something that you always do? Absolutely. You know, after you run so many miles, your body starts to tell you, I don't want to run anymore. Give up, it says. Go take a nap. Oh, I've heard that voice. Right. So I'm over here trying to be the voice that says, you can do this. Keep going. I'm encouraging them. Well, that's pretty... Hey, it's up. Let's go. Yes, you've got this. Come on. You're almost there. Keep going. Help me out. Oh, uh, go. You, you can do it. Yeah, run. Put, put the bottom of your feet on the ground repeatedly. Run. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the show, Sally. I feel more encouraged just having you here. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure we can keep going without you. Hey, don't you quit on me. You get out there, do the show, and finish strong. Do you hear me? I hear you. You've got this. You're the best person for the job. I am. Oh. <laughs> I am amazing. Mm. This is amazing. This is the best water I've ever had. Only the best for the best. Thanks. And you get out there and you keep encouraging people right now. I always do. Go. Keep going. You're the best. Go, go, go. You're the best, Brandon. Ah, I know you are. I know. <laughs> It's Bible story time with Kellen. What up, guys? Hey, Kellen, you got a story for us? I do have a story for you. You can read it yourself in the books of First and Second Kings, or you can stick around and watch a little human head puppet theater. Oh. 
Around 3,000 years ago, God chose a man named Elijah to be one of his prophets. Hello, I am Elijah. I am a prophet of God. He reveals himself to me and relates what he requires. Elijah was waiting on the mountain when God revealed. God spoke to Elijah. Elijah. Lord? Go to the desert of Damascus. Anoint Elisha as the next prophet after you. Lord, why are you whispering? Because I want you to listen. Oh, that makes sense. Go. So Elijah left the mountain like God told him to. And he found the man that would one day take his place, Elisha. Okay, these names are going to get confusing. Uh, Do these help? They do. Thanks. While Elisha was out plowing in the field, Elijah went up and threw his coat around him a symbol that Elisha had been chosen as the next prophet. Elisha! Oh, what? Here you are. Dude, what does this mean? You will one day take my place as prophet of God. Oh, far out. No, no. Right here. Righteous. Yes. Uh, I will follow you. Good. Let's go. So, Elisha became Elijah's servant. And for many years, Elisha followed Elijah everywhere. But then the time came for God to do something very special with Elijah. Elijah was going somewhere that Elisha couldn't follow. Elisha, stay here. The Lord wants me to go to Bethel. Just as sure as you and the Lord are alive, I'm going to stay right by your side. (gasps) Dude, I rhymed! (laughs) So they went down to Bethel. In Bethel, some prophets asked Elisha if he knew that God was taking Elijah to heaven that day. Yeah, I know. Be quiet. Elisha, stay here. The Lord wants me to go. To Jericho. Jericho's the place where God's sending you. But sure as you're born, I'm going there too. Ah, oh, dude, I rhymed again. Ah, what? So they went to Jericho. In Jericho, some more prophets asked Elisha if he was aware that God was taking Elijah to heaven that day. I know. What does everyone keep bringing it up? Elisha, stay here. The Lord wants me to go to the Jordan River. If I've told you once, I've told you three times. If you're going someplace, I'm going to go there also. I couldn't think of a rhyme. So they walked to the Jordan River. A group of 50 prophets followed them to the river and stop nearby to watch what happened next. Whoa! What are we supposed to do now, swim? Just watch and be amazed. Am I supposed to be amazed yet? I'm trying to take off my coat. Oh! You you want me to help? No, no, just, just let Kellen do it. Oh, yeah. Will do. Elijah took off his coat, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. Whoa! Tell me, after we walk through the river on dry land, what can I do for you before I'm taken away? Oh, please give me a double share of your spirit. That's a tough one. But... If you see me when I'm taken away from you, then you will get what you have asked for. If you don't see me, you won't get it. Okay, but what exactly am I looking for? Suddenly, there appeared a chariot with horses made of fire. 
Something like this, I should think. I see it. <gasps> Whoa. Oh, goodbye, Elijah. You've always been a father to me. Goodbye. Goodbye. Wow. Woo! It disappeared. It went into heaven, dude. On a big chariot. Oh, I'm going to honor him with a great piano piece. After Elijah had been taken up to heaven, Elisha used Elijah's coat to cross back over the Jordan River. When the group of 50 prophets waiting there saw Elisha crossing through the Jordan River on dry land, they knew Elisha had been given the spirit of Elijah. The end. Thanks for helping out, guys. Hey, way to tell that story. Way to tell that Bible story, Kellen. You're amazing. Thank you for the encouragement. Hey, that's what friends do. It's true. That's what Elisha did for Elijah when he stayed with him right till the end. And what Elijah did for Elisha when he left a share of his spirit. And what God does for us when he gives us the Holy Spirit to help and encourage us through good times and bad. Great points, both of you, both of you. Now get out there and keep telling more Bible stories, Kellen. I will. Go, 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 go. Uh, oh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay, here we go. Woo! You're good at that. Encouraging people? Thanks. Oh, that and yelling. Good. Then reveal the question! When has someone encouraged you? You encouraged me when I was learning how to juggle potatoes. That would have worked if you hadn't baked them first. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. And you encourage me every day. And that's because you're the best. You are. You are. Talk about it together. Yeah. When has someone encouraged you? Yeah, we'll see you guys next time for a brand new song. song. I'm telling you, you are. You are. You're the best. Dar. Fader. <laughs> Dar. Fader. <laughs> Churl. <laughs> Lanthropist. Lanthropist. <laughs> Lanthropist. Cla. Mms. Cla. Cla. P. Cla. Jesus, you have been so faithful.
know, at the start of our story, Elijah was having a pretty rough time of it. He was carrying the message of God all by himself, and he truly believed he was the only prophet left. It was a really hard job, and it was a really lonely job. But then, God sent Elisha into his life, and the two of them partnered together, carrying God's message all the way up until the end of Elijah's life. The encouragement from Elisha was exactly what Elijah needed to get the job done. Have you ever had a moment like that? I mean, we talked earlier today about moments where we wished we had a friend to help us. Imagine setting up a tent or playing frisbee or tug of war alone. When you're facing a hard task by yourself, it can be really hard and lonely. But if we have someone to come alongside us and encourage us, that could be just what we need to finish the job. Now I know it's easy for us to think of ourselves as Elijah. Asking the question, well, where's my Elisha? Where's somebody to come into my life and encourage me? But we also need to be asking the question, who can I be an Elisha to? Who can I encourage today? So this week, we're gonna ask the question, when has someone encouraged you? I want you to think about that person, think about that circumstance, and then turn around and figure out who does God want me to be an encouragement to? We need to be an Elisha in other people's lives as well. Let's pray and thank God for good friends. God, thank you for friends that encourage us. We couldn't do a lot of the things we do without them. They make a difference in our lives. So I pray this week that as we reflect on the people that have encouraged us, that we would in turn look for ways to encourage others also. We thank you for this story of Elijah and how Elisha encouraged him. In Jesus' name, amen.